I heard the faint swoosh of the seahorse's talisman and the tap of rain on the roof. I smelled the acrid stench of the bilge and felt the cot around me. My legs felt like something other than legs. The muscles moved all wrong as I shifted in the bunk. But that was nothing compared to my heart. My lungs didn't feel like they worked right anymore either. I wondered if I was turning into some sort of sea creature. Some blind thing that crawled in deep, dark places not fit for pony kind. My pip buck was gone. Glory, I rasped, my voice throaty and raw. I felt sick and coughed and hacked as I turned my head about. As if just twisting my neck might magically regenerate my eyes. Then I unbalanced and flopped it down onto the seahorse's wooden deck. Glory! I rasped again, my chest clenching in pain as if it were trying to expel my own lungs. Then I heard a terrified little sob, a filly's sob. She sniffled in a snotty nose. She's... she's outside, Blackjack. I need her. I need to talk to her, I said as I turned towards the sound of Scotch's voice and extended a limb towards her. I felt a leg under my, and I heard her scream a little and jerk away. I shivered as I pulled back. She gasped and sobbed as she shuffled away from me. I simply lay there before saying quietly, I'm sorry, Scotch. I'm not a monster, even if I look like one. She sniffled again. I'll, I'll go get her. She trotted from the exit her collapsed hooves receding into the distance. I dragged my body after her. I didn't get very far before more hooves trotted back towards me. You're out? Don't worry, Glory said from nearby. We'll get you another oar, band. Then I wrapped my legs around her. Stop. I'm going to die. No, she snapped. No, we are not talking about this. We're going to Sanguine and getting you fixed. She tried to pull away but I simply held her as she started to shake. Glory, I'm going to die, I repeated, and was amazed at how calm I felt. It wasn't that I wanted to die. There were so many things I wanted to do that I never got to do. But that was the way of things. You got your life until you didn't have it anymore. Don't say that, Blackjack. Don't. Hot tears falling on my cheeks. I smiled as I nuzzled her chest. Her strong heart, so very strong. Let me say it, because it's true, Glory. I took another burning breath. I don't want to, but I am. And I'm not going to give Sanguine the most dangerous piece of technology in the wasteland, just to save my own life. She shook her head as she sniffled. And I know how damn much this hurts, Glory. I know because if it were you... I'd move heaven and earth to find some way to stay with you. And I know that you, you would tell me not to. And it hurt like hell. But if you asked me to, I wouldn't do it. So I'm asking you, don't trade saving me for EC-1101. I'm not worth the harm he'll do. Maybe it had been a nightmare. Or maybe something else. But I remembered a flow of row of purple eyes, weeping along a gray neck. I can't. I can't just do nothing. I can't. She whispered in my ear. I love you too much. I wanted to do, to do so much with you. She sniffed as she shook. Don't tell me to do nothing and watch you die. Well, you could just dump me in the river. One more piece of junk in the water, you'd notice, I said with a little smile. She gave a callous little hiccup before murmuring. You're unbelievable, you know that? She kissed softly right beneath my horn. I won't just give up. You never gave up on me, on any of us. You always came for us. Please, let us try to find some way, any way, to take care of you. All right, I replied making that concession. No sanguine, though. She sighed as she carefully lifted me onto her back and then onto a cot. No sanguine, she replied as she laid me on my side. 
I'm sorry, Scotch was... I guess I look pretty bad. Did I at least regenerate my cutie mark? I asked as I smiled again. I mean, losing eyes is like... whatever. But having my flank shot off? Horrors. She made another hiccuping laugh and sniffled. Yes, but your eye... She said softly as she nuzzled my cheek. Hey, the only thing that sucks about not having eyes is that I can't see you. I said as I nuzzled her back, and that I couldn't see my enemies, and that I couldn't shoot anything, and that I felt the panic slowly chewing up on my brain. I fought to keep it away because I felt like I'd fall apart right now. I might as well have passed EC-1101 to Sanguine myself. If a cheesy line kept both of us together, well, she made another of those hiccuping, laughing sobs. That's the sweetest thing you could have ever said, really. I can't believe that's the only deterrent to being blind. After all, you can't... And since my hooves were limp noodles, I shut her up with a kiss instead. To be fair, it was a very nice kiss. Finally, though, she pulled her mouth away. We're going to find some way to help you. She had said that. Just like not thinking about what had happened to me. She was holding me together, and the thought of saving me kept her together. I couldn't deny that. Just no sanguine, I repeated. She sighed, then nodded against me, and I smiled. And bring me back my pip-buck. I feel naked without it. Uh, Blackjack, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but we don't normally wear clothes. I know little cheek, as I said. You might not normally wear clothes, but I've gotten shot at enough to consider barding clothes. Was she always so soft and sweet? Yes. Yes, she was. Okay. I need it a bit longer, then I'll bring it back. She swore before finally pulling away. I sighed as I laid in the back, and I listened to her light hoof steps recede out of the wooden floor. Then my ears twitched as she said, She doesn't want us to go to Sanguine. Given that I couldn't peek in on their conversation, I could at least eavesdrop. Well, duh, because she's not an idiot. P21 retorted, He's our best and only bet for saving her life. You saw her legs. You said yourself that it's only a matter of days before more gangrene sets in. Her blood circulation is getting pinched off on her extremities. I don't know if that's from the taint or the cancer, but after firing that last silver bullet... Glory grunted softly. Why did she have to do that? Because it was the only way she could win, Rampage answered. Apparently, she'd felt with it enough to let herself be unchained and join in the conversation. I was glad. She didn't deserve to be treated like a monster, even if she thought she was one herself. No pony did. After a long silence... Approaching the realm of awkward, Glory said, Well, between the cancer, the growths, the brand new case of infection, we don't have much time. We're losing her. Some ponies stomped their hoof in irritation, as P-21 said. Then we go to Sanguine and Blackjack can just suck it up. A long pause, silence broken only by the rain drumming overhead. Glory, you said it yourself. There is no other way. Unless you're reconsidering the pods again. It might stop the cancer, but it would not prevent the taint from contaminating other aspects of her mind and soul. Lacuna said quietly. Who cares about that? We're talking about her life, Lacuna. P-21 protested. There are worse things than dying, P-21. All of you know that better than any pony. Lakuna replied calmly, a voice of compassion and kindness, the voice of a real goddess. I pitied Unity for not appreciating what it had created. You might save her flesh, and that would be a worthy cause. But what of the cost of the guilt and shame she would feel? Would you see her suicidal again? And what of the magical contamination of her soul? <laughs> soul. P21 muttered in disgust. Souls exist. Lacuna said in a firm, inarguable tone. 
Your soul is nothing less than your quintessential essence self, the pure you. To change that is to fundamentally alter your complete being. The corruption inside Blackjack isn't simple biology. It's magical, and that magic is changing her soul into something different from a pony. So you want us to just let her die? Scotch squeaked. You should accept the certainty that eventually she will die. Even if she were turned into a ghoul or alicorn, nothing lasts forever. We are born, we live, we wear out, and we expire. Our souls move on to the afterlife, to be reborn, or to find another life. That is the natural order of things. When that order is violated, a mistake is created that must inevitably be undone at great cost and sacrifice. That is what makes life precious. Life persists simply because it is alive, is a fool's game, bereft of meaning. Souls matter indefinitely more. Lacuna said in a gentle, if somewhat lecturing tone, Damn it. I don't want her to die, Peter Nguyen sputtered. Of course not. You love her, Lacuna said simply. What? Oh, now, wasn't this an awkward silence? Don't you talk like you know me. Don't you act like you know how I feel, you freak. P21 shouted. You love her, or you wouldn't care if she lives or dies. Don't treat it like an insult. Lacuna replied. I love Priest, he said firmly. You like Priest because he makes you feel safe and wanted. Lacuna countered. I winced at that. Blunt much, Lacuna? You love Blackjack. Perhaps in a brotherly way, perhaps in other ways. Regardless, you love her, and that scares you, or shames you. I am not sure which. Peter Nguyen hissed sharply through his teeth. Blackjack killed the pony I loved. She beat him to death in front of me. Did you know that? Did any of you? A horrible silence descended as he panted. She handed me and countless other bucks back to medical to be raped again and again. Did you know how often she stopped it? How often any of them stopped it? Never. It never happened. Not blackjack, not gin rummy, not even duct tape. I lay there in that eternal black as he panted. Then, in a slower, low voice, I thought, once we were out here, somehow she'd changed that. Blackjack can do anything, and she would have. But every buck in there was resigned to the life they knew. Every mare was just waiting for the freaky outsiders to go so they could stop thinking about it and go back to the way things were. Not one of them had the vision or the decency to admit how fucked up it was. No one but Blackjack. I don't love her. I can't love her, because every time I think of her, I think of how she wronged all of us, and I don't know how to forgive that. I don't think I'm capable of forgetting it. But I can't hate her either. I can't leave her. So I follow her around as she rips herself apart for ponies who are no better than meat, wondering what the hell it's all for. He broke into harsh breathing once again and for the longest time there was just silence. Then Scotch said softly, I'm sorry, P-21. I am. I'm sorry I never did anything to help you. I once got in trouble for saying it was wrong to hurt you because you're boys. I said it was stupid. I got whipped. Mom did too. And we never said it again. His voice relaxed a little. You don't know what you're apologizing for, Scotch. I hope you never do. And neither does Blackjack. So don't tell me I love her. I just want to help her so she can keep helping others. Because I can't. <laughs>